Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Alison and, and, and speakers. Thank you very much um, uh, for giving me the opportunity of addressing uh, the Wheel Conference this morning. And uh, when I spoke to Ivan and Deirdre so, some weeks ago, I, I suggested that uh, were we to have a conference like this on the whole question of public services and how they interface with the public uh, before somewhere it would be useful that we could have it possibly here in Dublin Castle. I didn't realise we were going to take over the Moriarty Tribunal as a consequence of that. I have to say I'm also, when I, when I see Alison with her, uh, her big bell, uh, I'm, I'm quite shocked by it. The last time I saw a bell like that was in a schoolyard and some <laughs> teacher r running to hit me on, 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 over the head about something, so I, I'll try to keep to it. I have a script here which, which I'd like to go through, if I may, but I just want to congratulate the wheel uh, for putting together this morning's conference, and I do hope we're, we're all going to get something from it. Um, the fallout from the, the financial crisis that brought this country uh, to its knees will continue to pose challenges and threats of the most serious kind during the months and years ahead. International academic evidence indicates that a, a banking and financial crisis of the kind that Ireland is currently experiencing causes severe and prolonged damage to the economy. International economic events outside our control will continue to have a major impact uh, on Ireland's well-being. If this country is to reach a safer, better place, our politics, our public service, our people must learn from hard lessons uh, from the recent past. Now, the most important lesson of all must be a clear understanding of the need for profound change. Business as usual is no longer an option for Ireland. Remaining in denial regarding the seriousness of the situation will only make matters worse. Denial of reality was central to the unfolding banking crisis. When a government engages in such deception of its own people, basically not informing people of the truth, a trust is broken and broken forever. The crisis that has swept over our country in recent years has exposed major flaws in our political and also uh, within the uh, public administration system. As a people, we must affirm and value the benefits of good politics, good governance, sound administration and effective regulation. The culture of secrecy that surrounds much of decision-making in this country has not served us well. That's why we have decided that the budgetary process and all aspects of government spending will be opened up to much greater public scrutiny. Government departments and other government-funded agencies will be obliged to present their budgets for public examination and account for their spending on a regular basis. Now, the government will also spell out the legal relationship uh, between ministers and civil servants and the responsibility of the latter for decisions and management of their departments. We will also strengthen the Freedom of Information Act. The government is determined that all decision making within departments is properly recorded and accounted for. We will remove barriers to mobility across the public service. To facilitate mobility, I think it would be useful if we had a standardised grading system for professional and administrative staff across the entire public service. We need to create a management structure where senior managers are rotated across the public sector in order to nurture uh, and uh, help collaboration uh, between departments. We will open the senior ranks of the civil service at principal officer level and higher to, uh, and, and also uh, in, ter in terms of ensuring outside competition. We are setting a target of filling one in three new vacancies at senior level to outside competition. We will also encourage periods of secondment from the civil service to the private sector and vice versa. Training and professional development in the public uh, sector will continue uh, to have a high priority. Corporate culture is also very important. I believe we need to develop a leadership cohort across the public sector that will maintain and enforce the highest standards of our public service. Professional competence, personal integrity, ethical behaviour and highly motiv motivated individuals driven by a desire to serve the national interest and advance the common good, these are the kind of leadership attributes we will encourage and promote. There's a need for politicians to speak plainly about the scale of the crisis we face. I believe we need to speak in very clear terms about the economic uh, difficulties that we face. So here, ladies and gentlemen, are the facts about our predicament. 
In the last three years, our economy has collapsed by 15%. Over 300,000 people have lost their job over a three-year period. This year, the difference between uh, what we spend and what we take in in tax uh, will be about 18 billion. Tax revenue in 2010 uh, was one third below tax revenue just three years before in 2007. Over a 10 year period, public expenditure in Ireland virtually doubled. In 2007, uh, paying the national debt accounted for 3% of all tax revenue. This year, it will account for 15% of all tax revenue. In 2007, we owed 37 billion. This year, we owe 122 billion. In a three year period, we've gone from owing 37 billion to 122 billion, and that amount is inevitably and, like, and will rise over the course of the next number of years. Now, none of this is pretty. Actually, we face a dreadful situation. The only way to solve the problem is to fix the deficit, and that inevitably means further cuts in public ex expenditure and ultimately in services. There's no such thing as a nice cut. All cutting is difficult. But we should make the uh, distinction between indiscriminate cuts and cuts that can ultimately lead to greater efficiencies in attempting to protect frontline services. That requires an enormous amount of buy-in and support from public servants and from those who use that public service right the way across our communities. Now, our survival as a small, independent country demands that we repair the budget deficit in the shortest possible time available. I believe the wheel can play a vital role in helping the government to identify what we can cut and how we can make those savings. As voluntary and community organisations, you've seen the waste at the front line. You've seen the failure of the bureaucracy to deliver real change for far too long. Your buy-in and your support for the task ahead is absolutely vital in working our way through these difficulties. Now, the road to national recovery, recovery will be long and difficult. The government will not be able to bring this country to a better place on its own. It will need the active involvement of all our citizens in helping us uh, to totally recreate this country. And one of Ireland's greatest strengths is our voluntary sector. There is also a strong culture of local activism in Ireland. We see it in our chambers of commerce, our tidy towns committees, our local community associations, our local political action groups, and the constant fundraising for good causes that occurs right the way across this country. Education is an area where there's been an intense level of cooperation between the voluntary sector and the state. I think that cooperation has been broadly successful. Management has been devolved to local schools, and this has allowed local communities to become involved in their schools. This model has been very cost-effective by comparison to other countries, for instance. Uh, there is no large bureaucracy managing and administering our national schools or the voluntary school system that has been established. Indeed, where the state did become directly involved in the vocational school sector, it developed a top-heavy administrative system that is now being totally rationalised and reorganised by Minister Quinn. Another area where there has been a very strong and successful engagement has has been, of course, in the area of development aid. Ireland has a very strong NGO sector in this area and a very supportive public. This culture of support for the development aid is in part due to our own struggle for, for development and the long involvement of Irish missionaries abroad. In fact, as many of these developing countries continue to advance, uh, the residue of goodwill that exists toward Ireland is clear uh, for many of those new countries. Hospital care, however, is an area where the relationship between the state and the voluntary sector has been less than successful. The government continues to wrestle with strongly entrenched interests, ballooning budgets and a regular stream of uh, historic or current controversies. Despite the difficulties, however, I believe that health is an area where we need to develop a much closer relationship between health providers, the voluntary sector and the individual. I also believe that care of the elderly is an area where the involvement of the voluntary sector is essential. We continue to develop uh, in a haphazard manner a model of institutional care for the elderly uh, that has been abandoned in other areas. If we have learned anything from our recent past, surely we should be aware of the dangers of isolated institutional care. 
family home care, sheltered housing in local villages, towns and communities, and the direct involvement of family members and the local community in the provision of care for the elderly is likely to result in better and more cost-effective outcomes for all concerned. I believe that the voluntary sector has the capacity uh, to make a further contribution to economic recovery. One idea that I want to launch here today is an example of how the public sector uh, can embrace the voluntary and community pillar in the provision of uh, shared services. Now, as Minister with responsibility for the Office of Public Works, one of my tasks is to protect and preserve the built heritage uh, of our country. The OPW has responsibility for over 780 national monuments. From Kilmainham Jail to the Rock of Cashel, important national monuments are presented to the public and they're a key part of our local and national tourism. Everywhere I go across the country, local conservation historical groups ask me to extend opening hours, to provide better interpretive facilities, or to open up a site uh, to which the public currently don't have access. Like every member of the government, I don't have the money to do what I would like to do in achieving these objectives. But the question I want to pose is this. Why can't Logan organisations, working in partnership with the OPW, help to transform tourist potential in their area by taking some measure of ownership in the preservation of these sites? Now, the National Heritage Trust in the UK uh, works in partnership with local community organisations in the preser uh, preservation of the built heritage uh, that is within the United Kingdom. I have today instructed my officials to produce a new policy framework that would allow the state and local community groups to enter into a new partnership. There will be, of course, public liability, health and safety, and industrial relations issues attached to decisions like this. Quite frankly, these kind of barriers must be swept aside if we're going to make progress in this and indeed other areas when it comes to frontline services. And I'm today inviting submissions from interested groups about how we can best proceed on this small but important initiative. And I, I, I've, I've cited that example, uh, it's a very small example, but I think that example could be replicated right the way across the public service, whereby local organisations who have clearly come together with a purpose in terms of pre presenting or preserving historic buildings for their own community, should now take ownership of this, should be directly responsible for controlling it, managing it, working with us on, a, on an agreed framework, as happens in other countries. I, I think that is absolutely essential if we are going to make progress on a whole range of issues. And I think that idea is something that we need, that we, we need to continue. I'm absolutely clear of the two tasks that we've been given by the Irish people, the mandate, if you like. The first mandate, the first part of the mandate that the new government has is to fix this problem as soon as we can and to get back some measure of economic independence to this country, to get back, as the Taoiseach describes it, economic sovereignty. But the elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen, is the deficit that we face with or without the banking crisis. And that's the issue that the government have been given a mandate to fix as soon as we possibly can and to do it in the fairest manner, manner in which we can. But the second part of the mandate, just as important in my view, is to transform our political and our public administration system for good. And we have set out very clear views in terms of political change and also under the leadership of Brendan Howell and his new department, uh, change in terms of public sector service reform. They are the two parts of the, the two sides of the one coin, if you like, that we have got to progress as a government. And we will meet enormous barriers and face enormous barriers in trying to achieve those twin objectives for the, for the new government. But we've got to do it. It's the only way forward. The independence of the country is based on it. We're not going to get our independence back. There's no future for this country in deluding ourselves and thinking that we can get through this crisis uh, by the old ways. And I think that is the mindset that has got to fundamentally change within the public sector. This is not business as usual. There are no magic bullets here. We have got to totally recreate ourselves. And I believe that the importance of an organisation like the Wheel and bringing together over 800 voluntary organisations this, around this country in stimulating that debate and how we can do that, how actually can we provide 
better public services working hand in hand with local organisations, how we can achieve that uh, where there's less money around is the task that we've got to set ourselves. So I don't see this as the end of the process, I see this as the beginning of a conversation between government and all of the stakeholders about how we can achieve that. And if we do that, this country will be in a much better place. Thank you very much indeed.